hey guys um thank you for watching my video um if you've seen it if you watched it brilliant if you didn't that's okay as you can see behind me my wall does look a bit different today the children and i really took our time and um yesterday and basically in protest of black lives matter um with the unfortunate with the unfortunate passing of george floyd um uh, which i would say was the most horrific um traumatizing thing i'd ever witnessed on national tv um and to have the local press and the news reports like not even local worldwide um reporting this and having to watch those few minutes of that poor black man fighting for his life and calling out for his mum <sighs> honestly i'm such an empath guys that every time i see a video listen to a report my heart just feels like my heart is hurting guys like this is so painful like why can't we live in a world where we all just love and respect one another and it was never always like this slavery was something that was a race slavery and racism combined along with systematic racism brought this condition into our society um we was never really like this we were never like this i wish i lived at a time when we wasn't like this because to experience it and to have young children and know that i'm bringing my young black and my mixed race child into this world with so much racial turmoil um and conflict it's a scary place to be and i understand that i'm very new to this platform you know i don't have a lot of subscribers um my voice may not be very loud um but i just feel like regardless of that fact um i'm using youtube as another platform to help sell my brand and what i'm doing as a black woman um as a children's book author um if you would like to get more info on that guys please just check out at martha panthers world on instagram and i'm also on facebook um but to the point of police brutality being a i'd say a subculture which has obviously stemmed from racism and stemmed from systematic racism because it all starts from the top um and you know if you look at the marxist um example of you know the power structure um and how they look at how power is you know is distributed among society you know you have the pyramid the top of the pyramid is the smallest part it's the skinniest part guys and that is where the main majority of the power is held at the top and trickles down to us at the bottom um so there was a point when all this was happening did i that i did feel like you know my what is the point in me saying anything what's my voice gonna do um but i came to realize that actually what's really happening right now whether it's youtube instagram twitter whatever platform you're using to make a stand for black lives matter for equality for justice because there will never be peace until there is justice and um, within our our law um system within our politics system within our government system our schooling system it's all a system which is unfortunately is rotten from the inside out um and it's really sad it's really 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 sad and it's a scary time and a scary place to be right now and granted i feel like a lot of the british people feel like oh um as long as it's not happening down here oh we're not that racist oh it's not it's not that bad down here you guys can't complain you know the us have got it a lot harder no unfortunately we are you know, of course we're allies to the us but also we seem to always piggyback off of off of what the us do but let's not forget that the british empire are the beginners and the trendsetters of um of really going out there and attacking and taking over and destroying raping killing murdering and stealing from other countries to build their empire so at the end of the day whether we're not the ones spearheading this um police brutality we were the trendsetters england you started it your royal family started it they are in position of power now because they used and spilt the blood of black brown asian 
every ethnic minority out there because for some reason white privilege just seems to think they're better than everybody in the world and that is ludicrous to me absolutely ludicrous um i'm personally definitely not a racist my first child um is mixed race i received some heat from my black community about it and i received and he received a lot of heat from his white community about being in in an interracial relationship um but at the end of the day love is love and love is blind um and when we look at our policing system things have got to change i don't care which part of the country which part of the world or country you are at whether you're in the us whether you're in the us canada australia new zealand ireland england uk i don't care things have got to change because if they don't change from the from the top and from the higher ups we are never going to be in a place where we ever feel equal like we're simply fighting to just be heard to be equal and when i look at these names yeah that i wrote down it gives me shivers like i actually feel sick yeah that i actually have to get onto the platform where i started this so i could share the glam fun and i can have such a good time with you guys but it didn't feel right for me to continue to post while our community while the black community are in pain while we are suffering inside and projecting that on the outside and it's not being received with the correct care that we deserve it is not okay so of course i've got the nhs we did the nhs guys because i can do nothing but commend the nhs for really being there throughout covid19 um I really hope the US have experienced the same as we are experiencing in the United Kingdom as far as the NHS really stepping in there. And then when I even think about the NHS and then I think about black lives, I think about the nurses, the doctors, the Asian, the Indian doctors, the majority, yeah? When, you, when you've got a cold or you feel sick and you're going to your GP, the majority of them are Asian or, or you know, of another ethnic background. You have the nurses that go and clean the bedpans, clean, clean your bed sores, clean all these things around you so that you're able to have a clean environment when you enter the NHS. And these are black doctors, African, Jamaican, Ghanaian, every part of the continent. These people are here and they're supporting and and I just want to rate them. So much love to them. Love and respect. Keep doing what you're doing. And um, let me not be taken off, off topic, yeah? Today we're talking about the injustice in our society. And that's happening globally. This is not just the US's problem. Unfortunately, if we continue to sit back and say, oh, it's not our problem... Uh, the problem is always going to be there and you'll find that it may get better on one side of the world but the other side is slowly far behind and i just don't want to live in a civilization like that i don't want to raise my son in a world where i have to tell him be careful son because these police officers that are out here to protect you will actually maybe in the uk not severely kill you but unfortunately names like stephen lawrence Stephen Lawrence in the UK lost his life. Then when you look at other people, Eric Gardner, Ty Tyra King, oh, excuse me if I said your name incorrectly, Michael Brown, Walter Scott, Tanisha Anderson. Black Lives Matter, guys. How dare you? This man couldn't breathe. How dare you? It, it really it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart. And I didn't want to get here and rant. I really didn't. But let's look at some of the, the statistics, guys. Yeah. In the UK and Wales alone, right, the fact of 163 deaths in police custody, yeah? So the fact that 163 people have passed away in police custody. And if you want to break it up, okay, because we speak so much about black and black crime and black people out here killing each other and black people are this. No, if you look at the statistics of the areas that you live in, if the majority of the population is white, then of course the higher incarceration rate or the higher population of crime is definitely going to come from that population that is the highest so if we've got 140 white people that actually died in police custody that is disgusting human life is human life i'm not here to debate whether or not you being brown or not being brown means that you shouldn't be attacked or violated um black people are being targeted and the fact that we're not being given any justice when these situations happen is what is imperative 
And what is crazy about it is that we rarely hear these stories in the mainstream media. Mainstream media, you should be ashamed of yourself. You honestly should be ashamed of yourself. We've got the US president turning around and saying that he will put armed forces, military onto the streets, which will in, like intentionally kill young black, white, Asian, Chinese, the whole shebang. You will end up killing somebody at some point, yeah? And causing more harm than good. These are the times where we need your voices. Because when you have people like Donald Trump, um, who, you know, we'd say is like the Jesus to the KKK, you know, and we need our own people. We need our own people to be out here speaking for us on these huge platforms. It's not fair and it's not right, you know? Then when I look it and I think about there's people like uh, James Gordon. Oh my God, he made me cry. I watched his vi um, video um, just the other day, sorry. He did his live, sh his show. Um, I watched that and the goosebumps and the tears that rolled down my face. The heartache that I felt um, and the compassion, the genuine compassion that, that um, James Gordon showed was commendable and it shows that it is possible and it shows that white people you're not blind to it you can see it you know it exists you know white privilege exists you know that we that unfortunately the majority of the generation are bought are born into a system where they will never have the best chance that your children will have and that is unfair. And if you say nothing and you are si silent, then you are complicit. You are part of the problem and not part of the solution. And right now we need solutions. So I commend you, James Gordon. Thank you, darling. Thank you. That, sh that made me cry. So if we create consciousness, a global consciousness, by using these, these systems, Instagram, Twitter, if we use these, then we're able to create a one minded society that now we are all flowing we're connecting we're connecting and there's nothing wrong with that and maybe this was actually why all of this happened was for us to all connect was to feel each other's pains and understanding and be compassionate and understand what humanity is we're in a time now where we have got to be less selfish we've got to realize that one love unity like our brother Bob Marley loves to sing one love, guys. In whichever way we need to find it and do it, let's just get there. Let's just be there already. Let's get there. Let's get rid of the people who don't serve any positive purpose in our society and let's move forward. And I'd also like to give a great shout out before I finish off, guys, to a friend of mine, um, Jerome Harvey. He, he's the founder of The Tote Project. And he also works within the mayor office um, within the violence reduction unit, okay? People like that, real people that are out here doing real things within our community are people that we need to push the voice of the people further. He, I mean, of course, if you really go in and find out more about the Tote Project, you'll realise that it has a lot more to do with children in foster care, care leavers, etc. But at the end of the day, they are children who didn't get the best start in life so we need more people like jerome he's building the gap between care leavers and people that are setting up these these laws and not not laws excuse me but that are setting up the way that the social working system operates the people that set up the rules for how it operates need to have that middleman that is able to show them you know what this is the voice of the people this is what the young people want and I'm just using Jerome as a clear example of what we need within our own society. For me, it doesn't matter who the face is. You can be any colour, sweetheart. It doesn't matter. But justice is justice. And if you're fighting for equality and justice, then you're going to find it wherever you're going to find it. So to black people who feel like white people shouldn't be saying anything or they shouldn't be involved. Um listen darling it's very ignorant just don't feel like that don't think like that because it's not progressive and it's not going to help i mean us coming out of trying to get ourselves out of racism and then at the same time putting others into a box of us being racist towards them it's it's so counteract like counterproductive doesn't not make any sense so guys on that note i would just love to say that um 
I love everybody. I love you all. I love you all. And I feel the pain of our brothers and sisters and our ancestors and people that have died at the hands of injustice. I feel it. And I just want, I just want a better world. I really do. So I'm going to send you guys all my love. I'm going to leave my rant there. <laughs> and um, yeah, guys, listen, just stay positive, stay safe, protect yourselves, fight against injustice whenever you see it. Don't ever be afraid to be you. Don't ever be afraid to fight for what's right. Okay. And unfortunately, if the police are the people that we need to be looking at and pointing fingers at right now, then don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to do it. Yeah? Stand up for what's right.